Uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned, my name is Dr. Tukoit Bernard Michael. I'm the executive director of TASO. TASO is one of the, is actually the earliest, the earliest uh, organized uh, civil society response to HIV uh, in Uganda. So I'm going to talk about essential about differentiated models of service delivery. Uh, Uganda as a country, we are moving to, towards test and, and start. You test for HIV, and if you are positive, you start the treatment. And uh, because of that, there will certainly be an increasing number of clients, of people who will need ART. Uh, given in the context of uh, a GDP per capita of about 700 US dollars, and then a health expenditure of about, 500, about 59, uh, 59 uh, dollars annually. You have varying levels of support and models based on, on client needs. So these are imperatives for, for differentiated models. You have uh, a very low GDP per capita, very low health uh, expenditure per capita. You have uh, an increasing number of people who need, who need, who need ARVs. You have people who are very poor, cannot afford to come and collect their drugs from the health facilities. You have to provide services for adolescent girls and young women separate from uh, adults at their, at their uh, clinics. You have a largely illiterate rural uh, population. So those provide the imperatives for differentiating uh, service provision. We also have different types of providers. They range from certified health workers, that's doctors, clinical officers, and nurses. And then we have the other, the other trained lay health workers, which will range from uh, uh, members of the communities, only direct members of the community, civil leaders, political leaders, opinion leaders. You have expert clients, people who have been on treatment for, uh, for a long time. And then you have a whole host of other many uh, types of volunteers. But these models, uh, as mentioned by Mark, largely hinge on an effective uh, community platform. Involvement of the communities, people who are HIV positive, their family members, their relatives, their friends, uh, and other various uh, uh, government, uh, government departments. Of course, the benefits of, uh, of community, there, there, there are a lot of benefits for, for, community, for community engagement. Uh, it provides you platforms for other interventions. You organize a community, you capacitate them because you provide capacity building uh, uh, for, this, for these communities. That slide just shows uh, the types of services we provide. The red ones are specific services, is one of the remote and the least developed part, the red dots, the least developed parts of, uh, of the country. The black uh, icons of women, those are programs specifically in districts targeting adolescent girls and young women. And then the, the triangles are comprehensive district-based programs working with the Minister of Health. And then the black stars, uh, the centers of uh, excellence are in our head office. So this is just a sample of a differentiated uh, model of service provision, and this is for HIV testing. We have a home-based HIV counseling and testing, which targets families of the index clients. Uh, people who are HIV positive as the index client, we follow them up to their homes to provide testing for, for family members, especially the spouses, and the children, especially those below, below five years who, could, who are likely to be HIV positive. And then there are customized integrated HIV testing uh, outreaches and to hotspots targeting key populations, uh, men who have sex with men, uh, uh, sex workers among others, and fish, fisher folk. And then you have mass community campaigns such as Family Health Days, and then you have the integrated HIV testing and counseling. Uh, so the other uh, very prominent uh, a differentiated model is to do with the, with the delivery of antiretroviral drugs. Again, it's the context which I've mentioned uh, earlier on. Uh, as an organization, we have about, about 100,000 uh, clients, active HIV-positive people. 
70% of these receive, uh, receive their care within the communities and in their own families. They don't get this support, this care from, from the health facilities, as I had mentioned, the reasons I had mentioned. So the major approaches include providing drugs at the community. You take the drugs at the community, at a grid location, locations you agree with them. They, they, they decide where to provide the drugs. This, this location could be, it can be a, a health center, it could be a school, it could be a home of one of the clients or a community leader, it could be a church, a mosque, or whichever location is agreed. So the drugs are taken there, then registered clients for, for that point come and receive them at that point. So there are so many of them. There are over, three, over 700 at our various service delivery points. But as we're doing that, as we continue the number of people who needed red drugs kept increasing, it was no longer possible to do that because the, those points had grown into very huge units. So we had to find a way of breaking them down. So we differentiated into, into by involving clients, people who are HIV positive, who are experts, to come and receive drugs at those points and go and distribute them to their colleagues in the communities. So that is the client, the community client-led ART uh, distribution. We also established drug distribution, distribution points at the facilities where people just come to receive only their drugs. They don't have to interact with the pharmacist or a clinician unless they need, uh, they need to. We started by providing one monthly refills. At the beginning, we're giving two weeks, moved to one month, to two months and to three and to three month uh, refills. So uh, the quality of programs, as mentioned, it is a right rights uh, uh, what rights based approach to service delivery. We do a lot, we have a lot of collaborative approach to quality improvement with the Ministry of Health, with the CDC, with the USID, and many other uh, technical agencies. We do capacity building for quality improvement teams. At district level, there are QI teams, and, uh, and then there are also QI teams at, uh, at the health facilities. So these are capacitated, trained uh, to, to provide quality uh, improvement. Uh, each site, each of the sites has a QI team with all what they need to, to, to provide QI, standard operating procedures, uh, policies, and, and guidelines, and use of data and a dashboard to improve to improve program dashboards that capture the, the indicators, they capture uh, the targets that need to be achieved in relation to, in relation to quality improvement. And then QI models that apply the interactive uh, plan, do, uh, plan, plan, do, study, and, and act. And then regular performance reviews, we conduct client exit, exit interviews to get input into the quality of the programs. We conduct medical audits and then and spot checks by a variety uh, of technical, technical people. Uh, in relation to efficiencies, the, by 2012, the cost of providing ART uh, was United States dollar 322. And this was lower than previous analysis conducted among five PEFA countries in Botswana, in Ethiopia, Nigeria, Uganda, and and Vietnam in 2008 and 2009 because of application of differentiated uh, service delivery models. Of course, we shall need, uh, as it will be elaborated, additional support, more support in terms of uh, looking in detail into these models and really identifying those that are working and how efficient and effective, effective uh, uh, they are. Uh, as an institution, as an organization, 90% of our clients in care are currently, are currently on, on treatment. Thank you.